a lot of people have already said, just the breaking down of silos and individuals coming from different sectors and different fields to really um, advance this conversation around men and boys of color, particularly black males, the work that we focus on, and really try to advance the work in a way that allows us to bridge conversation, but also advance outcomes and impacts that we really want to see in the communities that we want to see change in. So I just think that's the most exciting part. And I just congratulate Maisha and Jane and the entire like Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for having the foresight and the leadership to become part of this movement that we see happening throughout the country. I'm most proud of the work um, that we're doing with the Alliance for Boys and Men of Color. Uh, PolicyLink has been managing the Alliance for a couple of years now, and it's now at a very robust place where uh, we have a strong community of practice, a strong infrastructure to support change in local communities as well as throughout the state. And we're doing that work in partnership with several folks who have been um, sort of at the helm of, of community change for a long time now. Um, the University of California Warren Institute, um, the uh, Fenton Communications, uh, Policy Link, of course, uh, the Liberty Hill Foundation, the Urban Strategies Council, and several others who have really been stewards of change around uh, improving outcomes for boys and men of color for quite a while. I'm most proud of that work. I think when I'm listening to Mark, when we first started doing this work with the campaign, um, I was amazed at how many different leaders there were out there who were committed to this work. So when I heard about the California Endowment's commitment to boys and men of color and then read this interview with you that you did with Root Cause and heard about the work you were doing there, it was pretty amazing to me. And then just in this session we just did where we presented our work around the Leadership and Sustainability Institute, people were standing and like, wow, I didn't know you did that you know, and people coming up to me, and just the energy around the connections that can be made to get involved in this work. I, I continue <clears throat> to be just completely amazed how many people there are so committed to this issue, and if we have the ability to create these connections in the way that we hope we can, um, you know, maybe we can truly make some real progress in, in the decades to come. And I think, you know, something really powerful happens when you gather a group of leaders and get everybody in one place with a common mission. And we were saying earlier in our uh, Leadership and Sustainability Institute workshop that nothing happened um, without leadership. And uh, I know that you know one of the questions is like, what are some of the top challenges and barriers uh, in this work? And uh, there are many, there's also a lot of uh, opportunities. But if I was to just pick one uh, challenge and barrier, I would say it's a leadership challenge, specifically uh, in philanthropy, on the senior decision-making board level. And I think what we have to do uh, as leaders and, 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 and individuals that are moving this work is to educate board leaders and presidents of foundations to increase board's willingness and capacity to invest <clears throat> in this work for the long term. Yeah, that's an excellent point.